I think you guys know what Jeep is behind me. All right, so I gotta drive the monster truck. Let's go. Damn, this is crazy. So this Jeep is owned by Dito, which he's right here. Nice. He makes dope bumpers, so make sure to check out his website. I'll have it linked down below. But we're gonna check out his Jeep today and see what he has done to it. This thing is massive. This thing is crazy. I'll show you a size comparison to me and the Jeep because on my Jeep, I can see the roof. On his, I cannot. <laughs> If you look at this, I cannot see the, the roof of this. On my Jeep, I can barely see it. On this, I cannot see it at all. So let's go ahead and get into the Jeep. We got boosted in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so first things first, what year is the Jeep and how long have you had it for? So March was 10 years with this thing. Uh, it's a 2000. It was uh, originally a Limited with the 4.7 and the 45 RFE in it. And right now, how many miles do you think the chassis has? So when I pulled the 4.7, it had 200,000 on it. I bought it with 100,000. Wow. So the 4.7 was basically stock. I did like HO cams in it. Transmission was stock. One of the biggest things that motivated me to do the LS swap was the transmission was starting to slip on me. <laughs> That's so, it? <laughs> then, you know, I got them. I found the motor for cheap. And yeah. that kind of sparked the whole LS swap. In LS it, so. swap. And I mean, you do have 43 inch tires and you recently took it to the dyno. How did it do? How did it perform? Yeah, so it, we did second gear pulls just because of the tire speed. Yeah. Uh, it put down 245 in horsepower and 265 in torque. So pretty pleased with that. Uh, it's a six liter LQ4 in it with a tick performance truck cam Yeah. and 862 53 heads. And it's re rebuilt motor, so it's, it, it's running pretty good. It's running all right. <laughs> it's, it's okay. No, no, this thing is a beast. I mean, to run those tires, you definitely got to upgrade axles. So right now, what are you running? What gears and what lockers, I guess? Yeah, no, so it's running 07 Super Duty axles. So the 05 Plus, 538 gears. Uh, I got a Yukon zip in the back and a Yukon Grizzly in the front. I actually just switched to the revolution dry flanges in the front just because i was having issues with stub shafts with 40s and this is going to be next this weekend actually is going to be the first trip big trip with the 43s so i was i'm contemplating or expecting <laughs> that i'm gonna have some stub shaft failures so uh, hopefully so not maybe, maybe rcv is the future i don't know hopefully not man and the suspension that you have is i see springs in the rear and i see coilovers in the front so what do you have in the front here yeah, so we got the 16 inch travel rad flows. They're two and a half inch shocks. I think the spring rates came out to 300 over 350, sitting at around, if I remember, six to eight inches of up travel up front. <laughs> uh, so that worked out really well. Damn. Um, and then you have the rad flow bump stops to match, of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Did you build the plate yourself to reinforce the frame? For the hoops? Yep. So those are that's actually three sixteenths. A little excessive. Yeah. Um, uh, but this this whole thing's kind you, of excessive. You need yeah, I mean, look it at the was, wheel. <laughs> it was uh, it kinda it kinda worked worked itself out. And then one of the things that I asked about earlier that I noticed is this gearbox it has this weird red thing, which what it does is it moves the shafts from up here to down here. Kinda like uh portal axles. The reason for that is that actually reverses the gear input from the steering column mm. uh, so if you look down here the pivot yeah. arm is actually forward facing where if, you know people that know a stock wj the pivot arm is typically rear facing yeah back there um you know, this thing's sitting at around 119 inch wheelbase and to those who aren't familiar a stock wj i think is like 105 i, I don't know off the top um, of my head yeah. around, it's around there so yeah. the axles f push forward i think close to 10 inches I mean, you have your track bar in the back, so right. that's interesting right there. So that track bar is about where the stock ones used to be. That's where the stock track bar used to be. No way. <laughs> you can see how much forward the axle is. And this, what does that do? What does that help you off-roading it? Like, you know, what does the longer wheelbase do for you? So typically it just makes it a little bit more stable. Uh, mm. There, There's always like been, there. you know, you read online, there's so many different opinions on the type of wheelbase you need for the tire size you run. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people say, you know, if you're running 40s, like 110, 115 is a good wheelbase. And then when you get into the 43 range, 42s, then you can get past 115, 120. Is that to reduce like rollover or? Rollover stability. One thing I noticed, I've taken this out once so far yeah. uh, with the new stretch and it did feel a bit more planted. Um, I mean, that could be a list of things. 
you know, coilovers are new. Yeah. You know, these tires are a bit wider than before. Uh, but you know, prevent tipping. It's just overall stability, really. Yeah, that's good. That's good to know. I didn't know why oh. people stretch. I'm new to this. I'm new to this. I cannot build anything like this. <laughs> I can't do what you're doing, man. Not yet. Not, no, not, not yet. yet. I'll get there eventually. And, of course, if you roll over to the front here, we got the detail special uh, stubby bumper here. But it's obviously built into the cage that has taken years to build. No, months. It took months. Months yeah, to build. took months to build. Years of planning. <laughs> Years of planning. Yeah. And then these are just, what, eBay headlights? Yep. eBay headlights with yep. the Warren winch. Nothing too fancy in the front, right? No. Just keep it basic, just, just basic. street legal. Yeah, street legal. Uh, <laughs> I, got, I still have the blinkers operational. Uh, everything works as it should. We don't do a whole lot of night wheeling. So as you can probably notice, there's no like light bars or anything like that. Mm. I just really... That's true. I never even thought about that. Yeah, yeah you know... No the, light uh, bars. I always liked a clean, simple look. So it's kind of... I mean, it's not super simple, but yeah. it's, you know, pretty basic in, in some regard. And it looks clean like that. It looks mean. I recently took off the rack from my Jeep, and honestly, that changes the look of it. Yeah. It just looks way cleaner that way. And you have the fender tight in here. You, you obviously got rid of the stock ones because yeah, they had big wheels, yeah. <laughs> big wheels. And I really like the way that you covered the, the hole here. It just looks clean. It makes it look like a fender, I think. It, it, it added a nice finished look to it. That it, was one of the finishing yeah. touches I, I was recently working on. And that ties into the rock sliders that I'm guessing you made as well? Yep. Yep. And then I noticed that on the bottom here, you do have skids all the way across. So that's for all the rocks, right? <laughs> that's for all the rocks. That's for all the rock gardens. <laughs> and okay, back here, let's see what suspension you have. So you have dual rate springs. What are those from? So the dual rate springs are actually, if I remember correctly, they're four and a half inch metal cloak springs for a JKU. Metal cloak. Yeah. Uh, and then we have the Terraflex speed bumps. Right here. They've been great. Uh, no complaints there. Uh, definitely not quite as smooth as the Rad Flows, but you know, <laughs> there, there is a price difference there. And then we have the Falcon shocks. Honestly, another fantastic upgrade, especially if you're on coils. Uh, that's That's been one of my favorite upgrades that I did to this Jeep. I've been running those for- The Falcons, yeah. A few years now, yeah. One thing I will comment on the Falcons is they've been the only shock I've ran. Besides, you know, I'm sure if you went up and you know, the hiring king rad yeah. stuff like that you would see an adjustment difference but for the price you get with these you can actually really tell a difference when you actually adjust oh them. yeah definitely because, you, know, you run some and you can crank them either way and you can't tell a difference <laughs> no no on these on the stabilizers that i have you'd tell a difference from the highest setting to the lowest yeah night and day for sure and i see some splines here i'm guessing that's for a sway bar type of thing yeah so this was i think it was a raptor sway bar off of amazon mm it's the same sway bar off of of what would be for like the rear of a jku yeah or jk i'm not running it now because the width of these tires would hit the arms that i had oh okay um, and i haven't revisited this yet to you know make that work again and honestly yeah. the stability that i've seen with the coilovers oh i'm not sure if i'm really gonna run it again the coilovers kind of act as a, as a i think sway bar my theory maybe is because i have mounted so high through the hood yeah i um, mean it, it added a little stability and my spring race that i'm running are pretty stiff yeah this thing doesn't see a whole lot of highway so, no no so, <laughs> this thing, good for what it a is. lot of rocks though yeah. a lot of rocks for sure and you move on to back here this is your custom so this swing carrier this is how i used to carry my spare uh when i was running 40s oh, okay uh so typically i had a cage back here that basically cradled the tire yeah I took that off. You know, I went to the 43s. This thing is a trailer queen. So, you know, the spare <laughs> is just going to live on the trailer for now. Uh, you know, lifting up a tire and wheel combo that weighs like 180 pounds. Yeah, the weight of it. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of a normal guy. I'm not wanting to do that. <laughs> so, it's, it's just going to stay on the trailer. I mean, you could just drive back to the trailer when, yeah, in another know, rig. Yeah, yeah if you need it. Buddies, you send yeah. someone back to, to go pick up. So, this is just going to stay like this for now? For now. And, you yeah. know, the way it was built... I kind of tied it in with the structure of the cage. Oh, so okay. It's, you know, it does add a lot of structure yeah. in that regard. So, so I'll leave it on there. It is good to have. Yeah. So we can actually open it up. Oh, let's see. Yeah. And how does this, how this one differ from the one that you sell on your website? So the bumper itself is very similar. Uh, the bumper that I sell on the website, as far as the tire care goes, I have it rated up to a 37. Uh, it could. I ran 40s on those, no problem. Uh, the reason I went with this design is mainly because I knew I was running 40s with beadlocks. Yeah. I wanted something a little easier 
to pull down as far as it would this would be able to fold down and pull the tire out yeah and with a bolt-on design like the one that you see on the website that's next to impossible to do as far as being able to tie it into the quarter armor and uh one thing that i guess people don't really know about you or they should though is that you do cad cad design right yeah so uh i am essentially a mechanical engineer <laughs> uh, but I, I have years of CAD experience, solid yeah. work, Fusion 360. That, that's how you build all this cool stuff. Yeah, this is how this all comes to life. Man, this is crazy here. And you had to cut up the headliner to make everything fit? Yep, headliners yeah. cut into three pieces. And that's for the lockers, I'm guessing? Yep. And yeah, so the rear is an air locker. Do you also have like somewhere to, to air up or no? So I don't have that set up currently. Yeah. Um, it actually has another port on it to where I could. Oh, okay. Uh, that air compressor that I have is extremely small, and it would probably catch on fire if I tried to. <laughs> it's forty threes. <laughs> yeah, it gets so super hot. Typically, it just goes back yeah. on the trailer after uh, after the rolling trip. And it looks like you have custom wheel wells too. Yep. <laughs> you needed them, right? <laughs> yeah. So I think the factory one stopped about here. Man. Uh, give, well, maybe around there, and then I had to push those back for the for the new tires. That's I had to do that with the forties. With the forties, uh, yeah. When I did the fender cut. And you have to have a fire extinguisher. You never know. Never, never know. know. <laughs> you know. A lot of custom stuff. Stuff goes wrong. Yeah. You know, can't can't ever be too confident with that kind of thing. No, not with custom. And what what control arms are you running? They look like Clayton, but they could be home homemade. I don't know. So they're yeah, I built those. Um, just a typical square control yeah. arm, quarter wall, uh, two by two. Why square? That was. So it's a it's a bit of a heated debate. <laughs> uh, my reasoning on it is square versus a square two inch control arm quarter wall versus a two inch round. The square is essentially stronger because it has a higher moment of inertia. Mm. There's actually more material there. I think it's about thirty percent more material. In your opinion, they're stronger. <laughs> that being said, my fronts are round. Yeah, so you run best of both worlds. <laughs> so. so <laughs> my control arms are pretty short yeah i think they're hovering around like low 30s so as far as bending them goes not super likely uh that being said they're probably going to get switched out for aluminum mm, so why aluminum i like the look uh my rear arms are actually currently maxed out in adjustment oh, okay and uh, so you need new arms anyways yeah new arms anyways and uh I, i've actually been ordering a lot through wide open design and they're they're probably be getting a uh, control arm order from me here shortly. And what is that stronger than steel or? So because I know that they bend or they're able to yeah, bend back into shape, right? The the thing with that is they have memory, so everyone says, and uh, you know you can go up to like I think they go up to like a two and a half inch diameter. Yeah. And you know two and a half inch solid aluminum, you know stock that's going to be. I would imagine, I don't know the actual strength rating of it, but I would imagine that would be... It's pretty strong. Yeah, pretty stronger. strong. So, yeah. There's always something to do on the Jeeps, right? It never ends. <laughs> There's always something ends. to do. You know, I've had this thing for 10 years, and yeah. it still feels like I have plenty of projects to do. <laughs> and then let's go into the inside. So in here, you do have some custom seats, and you said they're just Amazon ones? Yeah, no brand? Very, very affordable <laughs> Amazon ones. Amazon yeah. ones yeah. with some PRP harnesses? I don't uh, do super long drives in this thing. And yeah. I've, I've honestly, so far, I've had those seats in for getting close to a year. Yeah. Um, and they do fine. You know, yeah. like, I've been kind of telling people, if you're, like, over six foot, kind of like a heavier set guy, those probably aren't the seats for you. Yeah. Um, but for, for what they cost, I'm, I've been happy with them. Yeah. How, do you remember how much you paid for those? They were under 400 <laughs> that's crazy so that's they're, a steal they're really affordable yeah though. obviously you have the v8 the ls and you needed to have a terminator x that way it yeah. tells you all your readings i guess right uh there's been a few people that have done different different uh setups, setups with the yeah. swap. Uh, i decided to go with holly just because i've used it before it's really and they have setup. everything they have the harnesses yeah, everything yeah it's, you know it's nice getting all the new plugs and wiring like you don't have to worry about the broken connectors mm -hmm. all that stuff and uh you know the tuning super easy and they have anything as far as like the dashes go it's I, you don't have to go that route yeah but that's just the route i went with and you were telling me also that the body all the body stuff like all the interior lights and all that is different from the engine right yeah, so the WJ is actually fairly convenient to LS swap. So everything inside the firewall uh, essentially runs 
without needing the PCM. Yeah. Uh, like your original cluster won't work. Um, some people, I think some people have got it to work with running the original PCM. Oh, and then and like a separate standalone. Yeah. In. Yeah. Uh, I didn't want to go down that road. As it was a lot. That seemed like a lot of work to me. For a little re reward. Yeah. I, mean, I thought the Holly Dash was cool anyway. Yeah. So I ended up getting that. Uh, but and you do have AC. That's I important. Have AC. <laughs> I'm actually running the original WJ AC compressor. I made a bracket for for the LS motor. Yeah. And then all the AC controls are still factory. And on the ride here, he did turn on the AC. Way colder than any of the Jeeps that I've been in. So I don't know what he did, but it works. <laughs> all right, so I gotta drive the monster truck. Let's go. <laughs> this is interesting. I didn't even notice that when we were in here earlier. Oh man, this thing has low gearing, huh? Yeah. Super low. It barely, <laughs> that's crazy. And the steering feels so light for B43s. That's the hydraulic steering? Yep. Yeah. Damn, this is crazy. And right here is where all the magic happens. This is where all the bumpers are welded. This is what is used to weld. You do a lot of MIG welding, is that, that right? Yeah, yeah these, the... these are both, uh, the bottom one is a multi-process Everlast that does take as well. And the top one is just a MIG machine. Uh, they see a lot of a lot of use, a lot of hours. A lot of use. And yeah. here's all the, the metal for the bumpers, right? <laughs> so you have the DIY kit, and then you also offer the welded kit, right? Yep, yeah, so we have on this shelf, we have the WJ winch bumpers, the stubbies. And then these are the radiator skids. Mm. And then this one down here, it gets kind of a little tight. We have the WJ rears, all the parts for those. Yeah. And then on the very bottom, we have the JK bumpers that I, I build as well. And then we kind of have miscellaneous parts. This is like where all the hardware is at. You have all the hardware for the WJ fronts. Yeah. Um, all the shackle tabs and the general packaging, gussets. The caps for the ends, right? Caps for the ends. <laughs> and then we have all the stuff for the tire carrier latches as well. Yeah, that's crazy. This is crazy to see in person. It's crazy because I have I have one, you know, and to see it in pieces. I could not weld what you're doing. I could not do that at all, dude. So I have I've been <laughs> welding for over 10 years now. Of so experience, I, I yeah. Can, I can say I've, I've welded a few things. Um, <laughs> you know what you're doing. One thing, like having a, a fat table like this that helps out a lot. Yeah. I think this is, this is a Texas metal table. Uh, it's, been, it's been great, and it's been really cool to set up pictures for it as well yeah what would you recommend for someone that wants to buy your diy kit and i guess learn to weld with it like what, what is something that you would recommend i guess the machine first and then tips yeah uh i typically i guess i'll make the disclaimer i wouldn't say the diy bumper kits are for a beginner um they can definitely be done and i'm more than happy to like help people through it mm -hmm. uh i typically recommend someone to at least start with a 220 Roll machine. Okay. I don't remember. I think Everlast makes one. I think it's like the, the MIG 200 mm -hmm. or something like that. And the reason I, I recommend a 200 amp machine or a 200 240 volt machine is uh, mainly for the shackle tabs. Yeah. Because you're, you're welding three quarter inch, a uh, three quarter inch shackle to a three sixteenths bumper. Yeah, it's a thick um, piece. And then yeah, it's going to see a lot of stress, especially if like uh, hard loading like that. Uh, and and even for the three sixteenths, I've seen some of the. Uh, lower power welders they still kind of struggle with that yeah. so um, if, if you're a beginner you definitely recommend just buying it welded that's what i typically recommend yeah people. um you know if you're if you have someone that knows knows how to weld or if you're, you know familiar with it i think they're the diy is a great option yeah um or if you're willing to spend uh, a decent amount of time putting them together yeah yeah what's your turnaround time for bumpers for welded ones yeah so that that can vary uh Fronts typically ship out a bit faster than the rears. The mm. rears still require quite a bit of labor. You know, fronts, I typically try to get those out within two weeks. Um, that can vary depending on order, like current order volume. Uh, rears, those can typically push up to four weeks, mm -hmm. depending on wh where I'm at as far as orders go. Uh, to kind of give you a, a, a visual, this is the fixture for the rear bumpers. Oh, okay, like a then, jig. Yeah, that's the yeah. jig for the rear ones. And then the front ones is this little guy. Interesting. So the fronts are way quicker to make and 
you know, thankfully, because I sell a lot more of those. <laughs> um, Anyways, that'll be it for today's video. I appreciate you for letting me come over and film the Jeep. Pretty cool meeting you in person. Yeah. Came across the country just to film this Jeep. So <laughs> hopefully I'll see you again. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully we can plan a trip and do some wheeling. Oh, next yeah. Time. We, we have to meet, meet in the middle, though. Tennessee. Yeah. In Tennessee yeah. or somewhere we, around we there. We can make that work. Uh, yeah, anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to check out his Instagram, his website. I'll have a link down below. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.